The Genesis Gun Control was designed to keep guns out of the hands of black people. The last thing that they want to do is to prop up a message that demonstrates to the very people that they rely on to gain their power is the idea that we utilize the very thing they're trying to ban to gain our freedom or to protect our families back during a time period where we needed them the most. I think Negroes should, uh, in areas where the police, whether it be federal, state, or city, have proven their inability or their unwillingness to defend Negroes, the lives and the property of Negroes, then it's only intelligent and it's only right that Negroes protect themselves. And I have encouraged them to buy a rifle and a shotgun, which according to the Constitution is legal. Let's do a little word association. Gun control. What comes to mind? School shootings? Assault weapon ban? Background checks? Hmm. The word racism probably doesn't. Following the rise of slave rebellion, there was paranoia in the part of white settlers that there could be a violent rebellion. As a result of this growing fear, a series of laws passed restricting slaves from owning guns. These laws were known as slave codes. I can run down a laundry list of freedom fighters that used guns to literally kill slave masters or to kill KKK members. But because it's so removed from our history, a lot of people just don't know about it anymore. After emancipation, several southern states adopted black codes, which barred freed slaves from having guns on the basis that blacks were not citizens and therefore could not bear arms. Gun control was started in Virginia to make sure that melanated beings did not have the means to protect themselves. That's what happened. It's not like me making it up. That's like stats, that's like history. During the Great Migration after, you know, the Civil War, where lots of melanated people looking for different opportunities and work, they galvanized, and even after that, to, you know, in the industrial age, to urban centers like Detroit, like Atlanta, like Philadelphia. There's big pockets of melanated beings in these bigger cities. And that's where the gun, con the gun control, the racist gun control, followed. As civil rights and desegregation was underway, the Ku Klux Klan gained traction with an agenda to intimidate the blacks and regain control of the South. In a few short months, five murders, 13 alleged members of the Ku Klux Klan said to be involved in the killings. When such an order as this moves in and takes over the police power, you are completely at their mercy. The Klan used to ride through small towns of Jonesboro, and it was only when they, uh, the folks in those towns shot, shot at the uh, Klan that those night raids stopped. A lot of blacks uh, in the South saw that one way of pushing back against racism is to be armed. Civil rights movement um, was backed by arms because they understood the need for it, because in such a small setting, especially when you restrict it, you understand this, the need for systems of checks and balances and to check somebody that's trying to stop your growth. So the last thing that they want to do is to prop up a message that demonstrates to the very people that they rely on to gain their power is the idea that we utilize the very thing they're trying to ban to gain our freedom or to protect our families back during a time period where we needed them the most. Post-civil rights era, Democratic-led cities enacted targeted gun control policies in black communities. As early as 2010, it took a black man, Otis McDonald's, suing the city of Chicago to overturn its 28-year-old handgun ban. Gun owners and activists are celebrating a historic victory in the right to keep and bear arms. A 5-4 to four decision of the Supreme Court, which overturned a Chicago handgun ban and extended Second Amendment rights to all 50 states and all the cities and towns in them. Law-abiding citizens like myself is being victimized by saying that you can't have a handgun in your own home. Why? Tell me what I can't have in my own home. I'm not out there robbing nobody. When blanket gun bans are enforced, law-abiding citizens are left defenseless to criminals. One of the most defenseless groups in the community are single mothers. Shooters shoot who they want to shoot. That's what they do. They shot two mothers on a site where mothers come every day to feel safe. Firearms defend the things that you value and love. And if tyrants 
whether they are tyrants in your neighborhood or tyrants in the law enforcement community or tyrants in political spaces that don't want to respect your right to exist, you have every fucking right to defend life. I am going to make it home to my family, period. Gun control laws have historically been stricter in urban communities. Just as crime prevention policies such as Bloomberg's Stop and Frisk. It gave police authority to detain people suspected of committing a crime and searching them for weapons. They live amongst themselves with their bodyguards or their security guards who actually carry guns to protect them. Every time somebody presents a new bill, Joe Biden, 1990, you know, Clinton crime bills makes it a law, gun free zones. 90% of the gun, the mass shootings in them same zones. So I don't want to ask. What made them do this? They must be taken off the street. Born out of wedlock, without parents, without supervision, without any structure, without any conscience developing. And Madam President, we have predators on our streets. I think what it is, it's them trying to gain more control by providing a solution that would require more of that solution. You don't walk in my shoes. Our lives are not the same. We don't live in the same neighborhoods. We don't interact with the same people. My past experiences are not your past experiences. I would pray that the negative experiences that I've had do not become your experiences, but sometimes you should step back and see things from another perspective because it could be you, it could be your family member one day, it could be your friend, it could be your child. And like I said, that split second could change an entire life. The push for gun control never considers who will pay the price. It won't be politicians with your security details or big donors who live in gated communities. Perhaps it's time to re-examine the racist legacy of America's gun control laws. Right now, there's a culture war against the Second Amendment, which is why I need your help spreading our message to counter their message. You can help do this by leaving a comment, sharing this video, and clicking the bell and subscribe button. Let my voice be your voice, and let them know you want to keep America tactical, because the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed wasn't a suggestion, it was a directive. Also, if you're wondering where to purchase your AR-15s are essential, I will not comply. I am the militia. I lost all my guns in a boating accident and your state specific Keep America Tactical shirt. Click the link next to my head or the link in the description section. Or if you're watching this on a mobile device, tap the small triangle on the lower right hand side of this video and click the link in the description.